I'm here with Gareth Hughes, the spokesperson for tertiary education for the Greens. Um, we're just going to talk about some of the major issues um, for the membership of the tertiary education union and for students. And I guess the first one for us is the importance of public tertiary education, of accessible education. So I'm wondering, you know, what's your thoughts about how we're heading as a country? Why is it important to keep it public if you think it is? Well, it is really important and I'd acknowledge the work that you and the TEU have done on the hashtag Keep It Public campaign. You know, we've been um, uh, really pushing it through our channels as well. On the select committee, when we're considering the legislation going through, we've clearly been pushing, and look, we've been blown away by the number of submissions. People know that we're seeing a slow erosion of public education, uh, encouraging private interest and private profit, which, you know, I think the majority of Kiwis don't think that's on. Previous governments made the decision we shouldn't fund private education providers at the same rate because you're basically paying for their assets, for their capital infrastructure, for further profits down the line. And sadly, National doesn't agree with that. They want to promote public uh, decline for private profit, which we don't agree with, and we've made a commitment we will repeal that legislation uh, and we'll stop it in its tracks after the election. It's great you've been listening so hard on the select committee and great that we have that opportunity in terms of democracy. I mean, the other voice in all of this debate, of course, is what's happening to our students, um, not just our institutions yep. and, the, and, and where public money is going. Um, what are some of the key things that you think we need to do for New Zealand students who, from our perspective as staff, are doing it quite hard? They're living in poverty and deprivation and that's affecting their ability to engage in education. Yeah, that's right. I think there's three big areas. The first is simple cost to living. You know, we know from surveys that around half students are literally living week to week or being massively in debt week to week. They're not actually getting the basics to survive. So we've announced a policy of a 20% increase to student allowance. We've just announced a policy of a universal student allowance for postgraduate students. We see this as the first step to getting to a universal student allowance. Labor's got a good policy around fee-free education, but when two-thirds of students are still borrowing to live, the only group in society who have to borrow to live, we need to fix it. Uh, so we've made some really strong policies to help with the affordability of education. In terms of disabled students, we need to increase funding for institutions to make sure that they have uh, an accessible education. We've just launched a policy around that. And thirdly, it comes to health services in the local communities. Mental health has been the single biggest issue that people have talked to me on campuses around the country and we've committed an additional $260 million to help with mental health services. We want to offer free counselling to all Kiwis aged under 25. We need to make sure that those counselling services are in schools, in universities, in polytechs uh, because it's at a crisis level and funding hasn't kept up. So yeah, we've got a comprehensive plan to make it easier and more accessible to be a student in New Zealand. One area of accessibility that we've watched be eroded um, under um, Nationals Watch has been access in our region. So our smaller yeah. communities, Timaru, um, Taranaki, Gisborne, Northland. Um, is there anything you think that you can do about ensuring that it's not just kids who live in Wellington mm. City or workers who live in mm. Wellington City that can access courses? Where would you be heading with regional access? Well, it's a key part of regional economic development. I'm standing in the East Coast electorate, my hometown of Gisborne. I've seen it. We lost mm. our Polytech and it was taken over by EIT. Uh, look, there's some fantastic work happening in our regions with really dedicated staff, mm -hmm. but it's hard when you're seeing a declining funding environment, you're seeing private providers trying to undercut to outcompete, and sadly they're competing on areas like paying their staff less and weaker working conditions. So look, it's about increasing funding, it's about making sure we don't see a continued erosion of public provision in our regions. And when you look at, say, Level 1 and 2 courses, that's exactly what we've seen. So we've got that commitment. We, I believe, are the only party with a clear policy that we would not fund private educators if they're out competing public providers. That's a core commitment for the Greens. I mean, it is an interesting um, issue, the accessibility. We have seen that erosion. The other erosion we've seen, um, I guess, is, is not just unique to New Zealand, but it's, it's something we've seen which is a pushback by democratically elected governments to good evidence from the scientific and academic communities, a pushback against our really crucial function as staff working in tertiary education as researchers to being the critic in conscience. So basically speaking up on the really hard issues. What sort of things do you think you know, the Greens would offer if in government to you know, the, 
the whole of New Zealand around that public voice, around that really important scientific voice? Well, it's absolutely critical. I've seen it firsthand when I've been questioning John Key in Parliament and he discounted the work of a scientific researcher because she was seen as an advocate. You know, scientists aren't like lawyers, as John Key once famously said, they're scientists and we need to listen to it. We've seen an erosion in actual real terms of the critic and conscience role. We want to strengthen it. We want to encourage our academics and our researchers to play an active role in our community. I think we're a richer society for it. We also, I think, need to extend it across other areas of particularly scientific research. You know, our Crown Research Institute uh, staff don't have those equivalent support. I want to strengthen it, encourage it. So I like the idea of a independent commission for science as a way that we can uh, upgrade the current chief scientific officer role who only advises the prime minister to advise all the parliament all of the country in an independent fashion i want to have a culture where we're having a rigorous debate about the evidence about the science about say an environmental issue based on informed evidence not just um discounting it or weakening the critic and conscience role and certainly for us obviously that's where the public comes in too yeah. because if you're a public institution and you know you're funded by the New Zealand taxpayer, you're funded collectively, your responsibility is not to one person, not to one institution, it is to a much broader group. So that's crucial. But it's also about giving academics and researchers the time to be able to do it. And when you're spending half your day ticking boxes and filling in forms of KPIs or PDRF, you know, it's a real challenge. And I want to see them have the space, the time, and most importantly, the support and encouragement to go do that. Because this is not only how we get better decision making across the country, but it's also about how we inspire the next generation that people kids growing up want to be a scientific researcher or work on environmental issues or whatever the issue that the academic is speaking out about. So valuing it is crucial to us and hopefully there'll be lots of academics knocking down your door when you're in government. Yep. Um, good luck with all of the campaigning and thank you for taking the time with the TEU. Thank you.